and Lipton Soup present Inner Sanctum Mysteries. Good evening, friends. This is your host of the Inner Sanctum, welcoming you to another half hour of Gore Galore. Come in, won't you, and sit down. No, 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 not there. You'll sit on Ezekiel. He wouldn't like that. Besides, you'd probably find him pretty cold. We've been keeping him on ice for about six months now. What? That noise? Oh, that's just his teeth chattering. No, not because he's cold, but because he's just finished going over tonight's story and... Well, I guess you could call him a scared stiff. Goodness, is this story really going to be so scary? You mean that lots of people are going to be murdered? Yes, Mary, but don't worry. We're only killing people who've never been killed before. Well, I guess then that all the characters in the story will need plenty of whole suet. Whole suet? What's that? Chinese for Lipton tea? (laughs) Well, you're half right. It's Chinese. Whole suet means good luck. And that's what it says in Chinese characters on the sterling silver medallion that the Lipton people are offering to the ladies. Yes, ladies, the medallion is a Chinese good luck charm. But more than that, it's a really lovely piece of jewelry. It's made of solid sterling silver, and it's hung on a narrow black rayon satin ribbon. That's the fashion this year, you know. Yes, this handsome medallion is the kind of jewelry you find at those smart shops on Fifth Avenue in New York. And to get it, all you have to do is to send 25 cents and the box top from a package of Lipton's, the tea with the brisk flavor, to Lipton Tea, Box 92. That's Box 92, New York City. All right, friends. Now get ready for a surprise. Tonight's story is called Death Across the Board. It's an original radio play by Robert Newman. And our star is that famous dramatic actor of stage and screen, Raymond Massey, who will play the role of John Strand. Do you like to play games? Your life, with even your soul, on one throw of the dice or the turn of a card. Oh, you don't care for such high stakes, eh? Well, did it ever occur to you, by living, you're playing such a game, and that your opponent was death. Tonight, I'm going to tell you a story about a man who sat in death's place, playing with human life, and of what happened to him. It is about 10 o'clock on a sultry summer evening, and Dr. John Strand is standing in front of the window of a pawn shop in the oldest part of the city. On a sudden impulse, he pushes open the door. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Anything I can do for you? No, thank you. If you don't mind, I'd just like to look around. By all means. I just thought if there was something in particular. Oh, I really didn't have anything special in mind. I just thought... Hello. Ah, my chess set. Yes, a very interesting set. And a very interesting game you're playing. My dear sir... You have no idea how interesting. Whose move? White's. Then White should win in six moves. That, sir, is very much open to question. Well, perhaps we can play sometime. And how much for this set? Not for sale. Oh. Too bad. Yes. However, if you're interested in chess and chessmen... I know of a set that I think might appeal to you. It's an Arabian set. 12th or 13th century ivory. The white pieces are Saracen warriors. And the black pieces are crusaders. Do you have it here? Unfortunately, no. It's not very far away. If you thought you'd like to see it. Well, if it's not too outrageously expensive, then you're sure it's no bother? My dear sir, don't give it another thought. I'd be most anxious for your reactions, even if you don't buy. The address is 23 Valent Place. It's down two blocks and one to your right. Go up one flight and ask for Felix. Tell him that Raphael sent you. 
23, Valen Place. Up one flight. Ask for Felix. I'll phone him, tell him to expect you. Your name is? Strand. Dr. John Strand. Very good, Dr. Strand. So I have the feeling we shall see each other again. Perhaps we should even have the chance to play that game you mentioned before. <laughs> Felix? I said, who's there? My name's Strand. Rayfield sent me over here. He said he'd phone you and... Just a second. How do you do? I hope I'm not disturbing okay, you. Okay, come on in. And stick him up. What? I'm afraid there must be some mistake. It sure is, Bob, and you made it, thinking you could come here and take me this way. But this is ridiculous. I said I... stick him up. Keep him up or I'll let you have it right now. What for? Because I said so, that's what's for. Let go of me! Let go! You drop that gun! Or drop it, do you hear? Where is it? Where's you? Sure, let you have it right away! Oh! oh. Okay. Now get up and tell me what this is all about. I said get up and. Felix. Dead. He. He's dead. Sorry, but he can't come to the phone right now. Oh, Strand. Congratulations. What? Who is this? This is Raphael. Now, do you think it's possible for White to win in five moves? What? What do you mean? You killed him, didn't you? Of course you did. Or you wouldn't be speaking to me now. May I suggest that you go through Felix's pockets, take out the most interesting thing you find there, and bring it to my shop. What? Hello! Hello! Rayfield! Go through his pockets. I've got to get to the bottom of this, find out what it's all about. A wallet. Keys. And a chessman. A black rook. All right, Mr. Rachel. I think perhaps I'll take you up on that. I will go back to your shop. <laughs> Sir, can I help you? Yes. Where's Rayfield? Oh, I'm sorry. He's not in right now, but... Uh, are you Dr. Strand? I am. I'm Alice Hines. He must have been expecting you. He asked me to give you this. What is it? I don't know, but I... Another chessman. A white knight. Oh, yes. Mr. Raphael is quite a chess player. He's more than that. He's a murderer. What? What do you mean? He sent me to see someone, a man named Felix, to look at a chess set. When I got there, he pulled a gun on me and... Well, when I tried to get it away from him, it went off and killed him. Oh, no. Don't look so surprised and innocent. You work for him. You must know what it's all about. But there must be some mistake, some horrible mistake. A mistake, eh? Then why did he phone Felix's while I was there? How did he know he'd been killed? Why did he laugh about it? Tell me to come here. Well, I... I don't know, but I, I can't believe that about him. I won't. No? Well, we'll see what the police have to say about it. Where's the phone? Back there. But if you're serious about it, you don't have to bother calling them. Riley just went past here a few minutes ago. There he is, up at the corner. Fine. That'll save some time. Officer! Oh, officer, would you... Good. Good Lord. Someone shot him. The, that woman hiding behind that car there. The woman in black. She's coming in here. Don't just stand there. Get inside and shut the door. You shot Riley. You killed him. Six months I've been trying to find out who got Ben. Now I can rest in peace. Where's Raphael? Raphael? He's the one that got the dope for me. Told me how to knock the cop off. Told me to come in here afterwards. Well, Mrs. Hines? Why are you looking so funny? 
Say, whose side are you on, anyway? Not ours, my dear. Not ours. Well, that's it. I just took it for granted you were working for Rafe. Okay, get him up and keep him up. What'll I do with him, Rafael? Where are you, anyway? Oh, I'm around here someplace. As to what to do with him, I leave that to your discretion. After all, they are witnesses. Yeah. That's right. May I recommend the cellar? Right through that door there. It's secluded and quiet. Okay. Get moving. I repeat, Miss Hines. Well? It's fantastic. What are you going to do to us? You can't be that dumb, baby face. Six months I've been wearing black for the only guy I ever loved. I finally get the guy that got him. You think I'm going to leave the two of you around to put the finger on me? You're going to kill us? You cannot, Al. Seems to me I did a pretty neat job on that flat foot. After all, they can't burn you more than once. Okay, open that door and go on down. Allow me, madam. Never mind, wise guy. You go down first. And baby face. It's not very good manner. No, I'm not going to let you do it. Give me that. No, oh, no, you fool. Let it go. Down after. Now hurry. Watch when I get the gun. I didn't mean to do this. I was just trying to get the gun, but she tripped. She fell. Trance. Why is she lying there so funny? Her head. Let's see. Huh. Her neck's broken. She's dead. Oh, no. It, it means I killed her. Not any more than it means I killed Felix. Look. They are lying next to her. Isn't that another chess piece? The Black Queen. Wait. He gave me one just like that when I first came to work for him. Only it was a white one. What? Black queen, white queen, white knight, and... No. It's impossible. And still... You thought of something. It's too incredible. But I've had a certain nightmare vision that... Come on. We're going to the police. Maybe it's our move now. had an idea that I wouldn't like chess, that it was a pretty slow game. But here we've only been playing for about 15 minutes, and we've chalked up three corpses already. Yes, this kind of chess is just like a divorce. Why? What do you mean? Well, it's a good way to get rid of your wife. That is, if she's a stale maid. <laughs> well, I assure you, most men don't want to get rid of their wives. Is that so? Didn't you tell me that a man had written in to ask for that Lipton sterling silver medallion on the black ribbon? Yes. And didn't he say he wanted to put it around his wife's neck as a choker? Hmm? <laughs> oh, dear, you don't understand. A choker is just one of the ways in which you can wear this medallion. Of course, you can also wear it as a necklace or... Well, here's what one of our listeners says she does. I put the medallion on my charm bracelet. I just took it off the narrow black rayon satin ribbon on which it's hung and then slipped it on my bracelet. The medallion was just the right size. Yes, ladies, and no matter how you wear it, the medallion is really a smart piece of jewelry. It's made of solid sterling silver, and it's about an inch in diameter. So send for your medallion tonight. The Lipton people are making it easy for you to own one. Just send 25 cents and the box top from a package of Lipton's, the tea with the brisk flavor. To Lipton Tea, Box 92. That's Box 92, New York City. Yeah, it's better right now, friends, while your hands are still steady enough to address the envelope. <laughs> well, let's go back to our game of chess. And our star, Raymond Massey, who's playing the role of John Strand. It's about a half hour later now. Dr. Strand and Alice Hines are sitting in a bare, quiet room. The chief's office at police headquarters. For the past ten minutes, Strand has been talking steadily, describing everything that has happened. So you each bumped someone off, eh? And you've come to give yourselves up. 
We certainly did not come here to give ourselves up, Chief. I told you that in both cases it was self-defense. We're here because there's a madman loose, a homicidal maniac. It just came to me a little while ago. There was something strangely familiar about this Raphael, and... Did you ever hear of Raphael Norbert? No. He was one of the greatest chess players the world has ever known. About five years ago, he disappeared. Well, he's playing another chess game now. The maddest game that ever was. Is there a map of the city around? Right there on the wall. Let's see. Now, here's Raphael shop. And... Yes, this would be it. This section of the city here, eight blocks each way. This is his chessboard. And human beings, people like Alice and I, are his chessmen. What? John. I know it sounds fantastic. But I think it's true. When he sent me to Felix's, he told me to go down two blocks and one to the right. That's the move of the knight. In other words, he had cast me as one of the white knights in his crazy game. Alice was the white queen. He himself was the black king, and so on. He just lined up all these people, said, you play this piece, you play that, no. and... That was the beauty of the game. The fascinating, exciting part to him... No one knew that they were playing in it, but he. For instance, Felix didn't know that he was a black rook any more than I knew I was a white knight. But his black pieces were all criminals of some sort who wouldn't hesitate to kill. And it was by killing that one piece took another. You see, that was the ultimate refinement. The thing that made this the greatest game Norbert has ever played. He could plan a move, but he had no way of telling which piece would take which. For instance, I killed Felix instead of his killing me. In other words, he was not only playing his game against law and order, against society, but he was matching his brains against that of every piece in the game. Against law and order, eh? I got this in the mail a couple of weeks ago, without any letter or anything. How would it fit in with your theory? The White King. Of course, He's cast you in the role of the White King. In other words, he's playing this game principally against you. Now do you believe this, Mr. Adams? Do you? I don't know. It's possible, I suppose. We've been having a funny kind of crime wave lately, killings without any apparent... Hello? Hello, Chief. Well, Andy's speaking. I'm down at the corner of 3rd and Sycamore, and there's something kind of screwy going on. <laughs> Hello? Hello? What's the matter? One of our detectives calling from Third and Sycamore. Said there was something screwy on, and then, well, it sounded like somebody got him. I'll make sure about this before you answer, but would this be part of what you were talking about? Let's look at the map again. Third and Sycamore. That would be in the area that's Rayfield's chessboard. Yes, I think it is. Okay, come on. We're going down there. <laughs> Lying next to the call box. Dead. Stabbed. Look there, lying next to him. Another chess piece. A pawn. A white pawn. Of course. If you're the white king, then all your men would be pawns. Pawns, huh? They're the pieces that get pushed around, aren't they? Well, they're the ones that are usually sacrificed. Two of my men. Riley and Valenti. Okay, Strand, you're a chess player. You think you can figure out what this Raphael character is going to do next? Tell me how I can meet him? I might. I only got a very quick look at the board. But if I can remember the location of the pieces... You mean he's actually got a board set up showing where all the pieces, where everybody is? There's one set up on a little table right next to his desk. No one's allowed to touch it. That's the one. And it was because I noticed it, commented on it, that I got involved in this nightmare. I think I do remember the position of all the pieces that were left. But of course, some moves may have been made since I saw it last. Well, what are we fooling around for? Let's go to that shop and make sure. All dark. Doesn't look as if anyone's in the store. Locked, all right. You got a key, haven't you, Alice? No, Raphael never gave me one. He always locked up himself. Well, what do we do? Two of my men killed and you ask me something like that. Look out. Okay. 
Where's the light? Right here. There's the chessboard over there. I know. Let's take a look at it. This is all there is to the place? Except for the cellar. I... Oh, she must still be down there. That woman in we'll black... We'll be down there later. Well, Strand. Well, at the moment, Black seems to have the edge on us. Several moves have been made, and we've lost several pieces. But we still got a the fair chance... winning that game. Where's this Rayfield guy, the Black King? What's he going to do next? Just give me another minute or two, will you? The Black King is still in his own square, which would seem to mean that Rayfield was still here someplace. The thing is, I'm not sure whose move it is now. You're right, Strand. speaking over some kind of loudspeaker system. Maybe from the cellar. From the cellar, huh? Well, I'm going to... Alice! Alice, where are you? Oh, over here. Are you all right? I think so. What was it? What happened? He must have had the place mined or set a booby trap, and when Adams went to open the cellar door, he... Where is Adams? I'm not sure, but I think he's over there. I must have some matches someplace. Here. Under that beam. There. Help me lift it off. Oh. Adam! Adam! Is, is he... No. But he's pretty badly hurt. Just let me get a few tourniquets tied on him. And we better get him to a hospital. This way. The emergency ward's right in there. How do you know? Well, I ought to. I interned here. Funny. There's no one around. Well, let's put him right there, on the table. I... Gently. That's it. Hello? This is Dr. Strand speaking from the emergency ward. I've got a very severe accident case here. Is there anyone around who can take care of him? What about surgery? Crandall? Oh, fine. Will you ask him to get down here as soon as possible? Thanks. The chap I used to know just finishing an operation. He'll be down in a few minutes. Will there still be time? Yes, I think so. We'll have to give him a transfusion once we get him patched up. I'll start scrubbing up myself in case Crandall needs a hand. Isn't there anything I can do? Just keep your eye on him. The tunics particularly. it would be too bad if he lost any more blood. Right. He's still unconscious, but not... Oh, hello, Crandall. That was quick. I'll be glad you were here. It's a pretty serious case. Adams, the chief of police. An explosion. Uh-huh. If we don't work fast, we may lose him. Shock. Possible concussion. Right axillary artery severed. I've got a tourniquet on. I'll be finished scrubbing up in a minute. And give you a hand. Take your time. No hurry. I'll just... What? What are you doing? Removing the tourniquet. But wait, I'm not ready with the ligatures yet. Or... You're not Crandall. You're... You're Rachel. Right, Strand. Rayfield Norbert. Dr. Crandall is still in surgery. Locked in, as a matter of fact. I put on this mask and gown, not because I thought it would fool you. Because, well, somehow it just seemed appropriate. But it can't be you. You were in the shop. No, Strand. You're thinking of my voice coming over a loudspeaker system from next door. If you're thinking of my position on the board, you forget. I hadn't made my move yet. Rayfield, I don't know why you've done all this, and I don't care why, but you've got to let us do something about Chief Adams. All that bloody... Yes, missing. Rayfield, for heaven's sake. Don't right. move, either of you. I want to have to shoot. I sincerely hope it won't be necessary. After all, when the chief of police dies... The game will be over. And the most interesting game it's been. But haven't there been enough death? You're very sentimental, my dear. I'm afraid you never would make a good chess player. Pieces have been taken, that's all. Rayfield, suppose we just give up. Say you've won. That's right, Rayfield. We'll feed you the game. But let me do something about Adams. There's still time. I've got everything ready here. All the instruments. No, straight. This is one game I won't have seeded. But I insist on having played out to the last move. If that's the way you want it, 
All right. If I'm not mistaken, it's my move now. The formaldehyde won't help them any. Hit his gun, Alice. Watch him while I get these tentacles back on Adam. Do you think you can still save him? Yes. His pulse is weak, but I think we can still save him. As for you, Raphael, you made one bad mistake. You forgot that three of us came to your shop. The White King, White Queen, and White Knight. That would put you in check. I, well, Strand, I felicitate and congratulate you. If I'm to lose, I prefer to lose in my own way. Watch your... Oh! oh he, he went through the window. There's a railroad underpass right outside. A drop of about 60 feet. I think that's game, match, and tournament. What? You mean the game's over already? Well, that's impossible. We've still got some characters left, at least three of them that haven't been killed off. We've been robbed, and I think we ought to call for a return match. Let's take a vote on it there. All those in favor... One, two, three. <laughs> That's funny. It came out just the way it did for our friend Raphael. The uh, eyes got it. <laughs> Heavens, let's not have another game of chess. Yes, Mary. Now do you see why they call the pieces chess men instead of women? Oh, this game's too rough for women. It certainly is rough. Oh, do you feel worn out and tired? Why don't you rest a while? Then you can slip into something comfortable. Like a winding sheet. And if you want to be really fancy, you can put on your sterling silver medallion. What? You have no medallion? Well, here's how you get one. Just send Never me. mind. <laughs> I'll tell them. Thank you. Ladies, if you want to own a handsome sterling silver medallion, just send 25 cents and the box top from a package of Lipton, the tea with the brisk flavor, to Lipton Tea, Box 92, New York City. <laughs> Before I say goodnight, a word of advice. If you should ever get into a chess game with a stranger and you happen to notice that he's got a meat axe on his lap, don't get up and run. Just make sure that there's someone else around to help pick up the pieces. <laughs> oh, by the way, this man's inner sanctum mystery novel is Lay That Pistol Down by Richard Powell. And oh yes, let me tell you about next week's Inner Sanctum story. Directed by Hyman Brown and brought to you by Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup. Next week's story is about a picture that kills everyone who owns it. It's a masterpiece of murder. Yes, just as soon as a man hangs up his picture, the vice versa happens. The picture hangs him. <laughs> and now it's time to close the squeaking door until next Tuesday. So, good night. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> Folks, the next time you send a box of food to your boy overseas, be sure to include a package or two of Lipton's noodle soup mix. You see, Lipton's is just like a taste of home. Yes, it has the same homemade chickeny taste as the soup you make yourself, the soup your boy's always been so fond of. That's why it's such a thoughtful, welcome little gift to send Lipton. And as you know yourself, Lipton's noodle soup makes a grand snack. So remember, send a package or two to your boy. And remember to tune in next Tuesday night for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.